Hello guys, my Power Fit YouTube family. It has been a long time since I've recorded a video and I feel like I start every video that way. But this time I have just been flat out obviously rebranding my website, launching my new nutrition services which is going nuts which is fantastic but they keep me really really busy. Um, and then a couple of other projects I've been working on in between. So things have been mad and my baby free time now is also... <laughs> getting shorter and shorter or smaller or you know less whatever word you want to use and those baby free hours that I do have I'm tending to um, do paperwork so writing meal plans writing training plans emailing you guys and all that kind of thing so unfortunately YouTube just gets a little bit left out but I'm back and I really, really love video content. I love producing videos for you guys. I guess I'm kind of cheating most of the time by using Snapchat. So you guys know I'm kind of on Snapchat and now also Instagram story all the time. So I'm often snapping my meals. I think three quarters of what I eat in my entire life goes on Snapchat. Bit of baby spam, a bit of catching up on things. If I have a new ebook coming or a new special or a program or anything like that, YouTube and Snapchat, sorry, Snapchat and Instagram story always find out first. So make sure you add me onto that platform if you haven't already. So we have missed each other the last few months and I feel that I have so much to tell you guys. I feel like I have at least three, four, five topics of sort of YouTube videos that I'd like to make for you. But I'm just going to cover a couple of the topics that I'm feeling really, really strongly about at the moment. Um, I've sort of, I never ever want to attack anyone else um, on social media or anyone else who's in the fitness and health industry. And I wouldn't ever name names or anything like that or shame anyone. But seriously, lately, I just... I totally get why you guys are so confused. I mean, I'm finding um, other, you know, social media, um, you know, fitness um, icons or celebs or whatever you want to call them, Insta famous peeps. <laughs> I'm finding other people are posting things about maybe similar topics to what I'm passionate about. So things like postpartum care, so um, new mum fitness and things like that. Also flexible dieting. These are the two main topics at the moment that are kind of bugging me um, because I'm finding posts and videos and advice, which is just complete opposite to how I feel and how I would recommend to my clients. And I just feel that the best way to get this message across to you guys and I guess reassure you of my methods and what I believe in and the way that you guys can sort of, you know, take bits from me is to record a video. So the first one, I did make a few Instagram posts about this topic, but it's really hard to sort of highlight a post enough. I just wish that I had, like, could highlight all the words in red or make them in bold or make them flashy or something like that, because it's hard to know that everyone is seeing these posts. So I saw a video of a brand new mum who was not even two weeks postpartum. So her video was posted of her in the gym, training, doing legs. Um, so lower body, she was doing squats, kettlebell swings, glute kickbacks, like this just makes me cringe, just kind of makes me feel sick and angry and just worried for her, to be honest, as well as everyone else. Um, so she's in the gym, two weeks postpartum, training legs. Now, I'm certainly not going to say that I know everything about everyone's body and with pregnancy and postpartum, everyone is completely different. So it wouldn't matter... Um, you know, your level of fitness or your walk of life, everyone would be completely different. And of course, if this person has been certif certified or, you know, um, passed off by a women's health physio or by doctors and things like that, exercise scientists, postpartum to train this early, then good on it. That's awesome. And I certainly am not saying that what she did was particularly wrong, but I just think that perhaps um, posting it for others who aren't as conditioned or as fit or knowledgeable or don't have that support around them postpartum with doctors and physios and things like that, it could really, really send the wrong message. So it just makes me cringe and makes me worry. Um, postpartum mums are already so vulnerable. So in my post baby journey book, I don't leave things out and I do tell you a little bit about my journey. So those first one to two weeks postpartum, I was a mess. Like I'm not trying to scare those of you who are you know, pregnant and expecting the new baby soon, but honestly it was full on. Um, breastfeeding was difficult. I was seeing, um, you know, specialists, midwives all the time, appointments pretty much every day or every second day. I was extremely emotional. So I was crying a lot. 
um, looking at my body, which didn't happen very often, honest to be often, uh, very on, often to be honest, because most of the time I was just drowning in boob and baby. Um, but if I was to pass a mirror, I had this sort of um, whoopee cushion, um, squishy belly and stretch marks, and I just felt so so far from myself. Um, I couldn't cook and prep and eat healthily because I just didn't have the energy or the time or the brain function to do that. So those first two weeks for me were fantastic and they were amazing. They were so special. When I look back at photos of me and Chase, it was just priceless. Like that, those first few weeks were amazing and you just cannot believe that was, that was even a time of your life. It's just a whirlwind. But as far as health and fitness goes, it was just the furthest thing from my mind. Other than feeling yucky and knowing I'd have to do something about it later, I just didn't have the time to worry about it then. And I just don't think that you should. Other than the emotional aspect of it, physically, it is just not a good idea to train early. So I started walking a couple of weeks postpartum. I didn't sign up at the gym or go to the gym until eight weeks postpartum. So two whole months, which trust me, felt like a decade, especially because I was in the gym on my due date and after my due date. So I had chased three days late and I was in the gym training and quite happily managing doing upper body weights and little things like squats without weight and very easy things. Um, but I was fine doing all of that when pregnant and then suddenly you have your baby and four or five weeks, six weeks later, you really, really want to get back to that exercise. You're craving those endorphins and you can't rush it. So even a body weight squat, even though I did it when I was pregnant, you can't actually do it postpartum um, without being cleared. The reason why is Google prolapse and then you will never look back. So basically all of your muscles holding up your pelvic floor, sorry, I'm dropping my laptop. So all of your Got balance this right. All of your muscles holding up your pelvic floor when you have a baby, whether it be naturally or by cesarean, those muscles are either cut with cesareans, um, disturbed with whatever the surgeries you've had, or with the natural birth. That obviously, you know, they you pushed out your baby for God's sakes. <laughs> um, so those muscles are altered, and your body is just completely different on the inside. So not only do you feel different on the outside and have a whoopee cushion belly and stretch marks and whatnot and humongous boobs that leak. Um, but you also are so different on the inside and it is so important to look after that and to listen to that. I, so being a fit freak who was training 10 times a day before I got pregnant, six days a week, I think during my pregnancy in the gym on my due date. And I still did not go to the gym till eight weeks postpartum. And I did not run or jump or do a step up or anything with impact until I think it was 14 to 16 weeks postpartum. So that is, is something you need to listen to. You can see my before and after photos. You can see that I've gotten my body back probably even better than before I had Chase. So I've definitely achieved a fit physique where I feel really happy and I'm enjoying balance, but I didn't rush things. Please don't rush. You can achieve these weight loss results and your skin will tighten back and you'll feel strong and have endorphins and all that kind of thing, but you've got to do it all in time. So I'm sorry that was a rant, but I just, you can see how passionate I am about it and how worried I am that mums are going to watch these kind of videos or advice and think that they need to rush back to the gym to be a good mum or to be a fit, healthy person. You don't, you really don't. Nine months to grow a baby, at least nine months for your body to recover on the inside. Um, make sure you're surrounded by doctors and physios. I'd recommend searching up for a women's health physio, someone who specializes in this and follow the advice that they say over anyone else. So don't listen to friends. Don't even listen to me. Don't listen to anyone except for your women's health physio. You'll have an internal, yep, <laughs> internal um, pelvic floor exam or assessment. And this is what you need to listen to. It doesn't matter how you feel on the outside or mentally, your body has to be ready. And like I say, if you don't believe me, just Google prolapse and that will be enough to scare you. So first rant over with, the next one is about flexible dieting. So I've just one week ago released a brand new uh, ebook, which I will also be printing hard copy. I know a lot of you are asking and I yeah, I really want to print it in hard copy. So you can get it either way. There's certainly no reason to hold back now with the ebook digital copy, especially because you receive it straight away. So you can have all that information like instantly, even if you are buying it at 2am. <laughs> So I did release a book, like I say, one week ago, which I've had incredible feedback with so many people already just a week later have found they've made improvements to their nutrition. They understand dieting a little bit more and they're sort of on board my version, the Grace Powerfit way of flexible dieting or if it fits your macros. So 
flexible dieting, and I said this in the book, is glorified on social media. So you see um, shredded athletes in pizza 24-7 or donuts, um, these incredible crazy desserts with 10 different um, ingredients, all sugary and gooey. That is not the way that I view flexible dieting. So the reason why I like flexible dieting is because my whole philosophy and my goal for myself and for my clients is to find balance. So I don't want my clients to come to me and go on a six week or 12 week or 10 week, whatever it might be. Um, sorry, I just got a message that was funny. Oh, good. <laughs> good news. Um, but yeah, I don't want my clients to come to me and have just a short sort of quick dieting period and lose some weight, feel fabulous and go back out into the big wide world and put it all back on or return to those, those habits. So what I want is for your diet to not feel like a diet and to be maintainable and sustainable. So it needs to be something that you could imagine doing for the next five years of your life. So if you're eating chicken, rice and broccoli, or lettuce and tuna, canned tuna um, and oats breakfast, which to you may seem boring. If you're eating a standard boring clean eating type um, meal plan to lose weight, just imagine, can you eat that food? Could you eat that food for five years without stopping? No, no one could eat that food. Well, some people might be able to, but not many people could eat that food unbroken for five years. So why bother doing it for a short amount of time when you can find out exactly how to strategize your intake, include a Freddo frog every day, include peanut butter every day, include, I don't know, Nutri-Grain every day, if that's what you really, really crave for or desire. Um, combined with, this is the most important part as well. So many people think that if it fits your macros means fitting in as many bits of candy as you can. It's the little bits that you're craving combined with your macro, so hitting your protein target, hitting your healthy fats, so omega threes and sixes for hormone, hormones and um, you know brain development and skin and that kind of thing as well, and also your fiber, so great for digestion. You need fiber in your diet, or you'll find that you're always having a sore stomach and things just won't work properly. And then also your micronutrients. So micronutrients are the new the uh, minerals and vitamins found within. Um, all of your nutritious whole foods, so your vegetables, your fruits, and everything like that. We need these in our diet to make us feel good, to give us energy, to have lasting energy. So it is a combination, my philosophy, my version, if it, flex, um, if it fits your macros, is a combination. It's a balance. So yes, eating healthy salad. Yes, eating a chocolate Freddy frog if that's what you're claiming every single day and achieving results. So if I could tell you that you could eat a Freddy frog, every single day for six weeks and lose three to four kilos, why would you complain about that? Why would you eat a clean eating diet? You wouldn't. So the problem I have, which is on this topic, that's sort of my philosophy in a very short version. If you want to know more, you need to buy the book because I also will tell you in the book how to calculate your own macros. So you actually be able to work out your own diet from my book. But the thing that's kind of bugging me on my nerves, which is a social media thing again, is that I did watch another YouTube video. So this is someone overseas. And again, I'm not going to name because I'm not about naming and shaming people. But I watched a YouTube video yesterday. Um, someone overseas who had done like a full day of eating, which by the way, I'll do another one of those soon because I think a lot of you liked that one. And so it showed everything she ate in a day. And she's going on about breakfast. Um, she had some kind of an egg sort of thing for breakfast, which was really, really plain. It had no flavor in it, eggs and spinach maybe. And then she was like, oh, and for breakfast, I'm having these two chocolate eggs. And I was like, what? Breakfast? Like, what time is she eating breakfast? Please tell me it's like 11.30 because just I just don't think you need to eat chocolate for breakfast. So on that, if I had a client who came to me and who was already eating, say, five chocolate eggs for breakfast, I would say, okay, if this is your thing, five chocolate eggs for breakfast, let's start with one every day or two every day and let's try and reduce that and include your chocolate egg in an afternoon snack when you're craving sugar and energy or a dinner so dessert snack when you're craving something naughty at night that's when i'd include something sweet like this i just don't believe in fitting in treat food because you can so flexible dieting to me is not about you know adding and calculating as many delicious things as you can into a short amount of time so it's not about fitting as much trash as you can in 24 hours seriously it's about hitting your macros and your micronutrients being as healthy and fresh and as close to raw and natural and organic and whatever as possible but keeping yourself sane and including treats every now and again so yes daily but there's just no need to put chocolate into your breakfast so i hope that in a short version kind of helps you guys to understand a little bit more about my philosophy and the way that I view flexible dieting. Please just think about balance and long-term health 
Um, you want to look after your immune system. You want to be you know, strong and healthy to fight off colds and things like that. And eating chocolate eggs for breakfast, even though it sounds fantastic, is not going to help your digestive system or your body to fight diseases and things like that. Um, it's just not necessary. So have them if you want them, but I just wouldn't want to see chocolate anywhere else in your meal plan. Whereas this particular person had treats almost at every meal and I just wanted to throw my laptop. Like it just made me feel frustrated that someone is giving out the idea of healthy... Um, you know, in this way. So there you go, rant over. Sorry I kind of rushed that as well when I spoke really, really quickly because little Chase, I'm just about to wake up. He's been in bed napping and I knew he was gonna nap as soon as I sat down to start recording. And he's been making noises for the last five minutes. So I have to race on back to mum life. I'll edit this one and post it up for you later today. Chase, he just got up and he wants to say hello. Cause it's been a little while since you've said hello to anyone on YouTube, hasn't it? Chase, you can wave now, do you wanna show them? Chase, bye-bye, 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 come on, wait for me, don't make mummy look like a fool, Chase, bye-bye, 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 no, no, he's not going to wave, he's still waking up, we'll blame it on that, <laughs> so Bubba's awake, can get on with our day, um, I have one more thing to show you, just one tip, <laughs> How amazing does this look? So I have just gotten my first copy, um, hard copy of the new ebook in my hands. So glossy. So it looks fantastic. The images all look amazing. It's got your sample meal plans in there. Yeah, oh my god. It looks amazing. So this book has been going nuts this week. It's only been up for on the website for seven days and it has been crazy amount of downloads we've had so everyone needs to jump aboard the power fit if macro if it fits your macros way that is such a tongue twister um let me know if you like the look of these hard copies and i'll make sure i get them printed asap you like them yeah he likes them <laughs> all right guys i'll chat to you soon